Dean, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Kathleen. It gives me great pleasure and honor to welcome you all to Academic Forum Series 9, The Future of Animal Assisted Intervention, a Global Dialogue, which celebrates the 30th anniversary of the founding of Lee Ka-shing School of Professional and Continuing Education, Hong Kong Metropolitan University. For today's academic forum, we are honored to have invited a panel of international expert speakers from the US, Poland, and Taiwan, who will be sharing with us the importance of unifying the communication language and standards to ensure ethical professional practice in the fast growing field of animal assisted intervention. Before the forum officially begins, please join me in welcoming Dr. Benjamin Chan Tak Yun, our Dean of Li Ka Shing School of Professional and Continuing Education, Hong Kong Metropolitan University, to deliver a welcome speech. Let's welcome Dr. Benjamin Chan, please. Dr. Amy Johnson Binder, uh, Ms. Magdalena Nabarechka Piantek, Ms. Wu, Wu Si Yin, Mr. Eddie Lee, our good friend, colleagues, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the, to the Academic Forum Series 9, The Future of Animal Assisted Intervention, a Global Dialogue. On behalf of the Hong Kong Metropolitan University, I would like to express my sincere thanks to our honorable speakers for taking the time to share your valuable knowledge and experience. This is the penultimate celebratory event of the Li ka School of Professional and Continuing Education, Li Pace, to commemorate the school's 30th anniversary in 2022. Li Pace, one of the seven constituent schools of the Hong Kong Metropolitan University, has always strived to provide quality vocational and professional education at the post-secondary level. It performs complementary but vital roles in fulfilling the university's founding mission of providing education for all. As evidenced by the extensive range of disciplines covered and study levels of its program offerings. Lee Pace is now an established vocational, professional education and training VPET provider of full-time post-secondary education and part-time professional and continuing education programs as well as corporate training courses. As the potential benefits of animal assisted interventions, AAI, are gaining worldwide popularity, the field is quickly moving towards a paradigm shift, adjusting its direction to incorporate more evidence-based research and aligning its purpose for advancing a new future as a nascent profession. Contemporary critical issues facing the AAI field today include, but are not limited to, research, animal welfare, terminology, standards of practice, and public policy. Lee Pace is proud to be in partnership with the Hong Kong Institute of Animal Assisted Intervention as the provider of the first and only credit-bearing program in pet care and animal assisted therapy in Hong Kong. Launched three years ago in 2019, our program has provided quality training for students to acquire practical skills in pet care and broad knowledge about the applications of animal assisted intervention. For today's forum, we are honored to have joined hands with a number of AI experts from around the world who are passionate animal activists making significant contributions to the future of the field. By bringing together global experts for a discussion on the need for unified and refined professional standards and training in AAI, the shared vision will help us understand the latest challenges, increase our awareness of international standards and standardization, and to provide us with insights for suggestions and directions for the future. We look forward to learning from our distinguished speakers whose professional exchanges and collective practice wisdom will continue to promote the professionalization of AI and move the shared vision forward. 
Lastly, I would like to extend my thanks to my Li Pei's colleagues who are involved in organizing this forum. I wish the forum a great success and all the participants an invigorating and fruitful experience as you explore the latest AI developments and engage with the wisdom and experience of all those present here today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dean. It is an honor to have you with us today. May I now invite Dr. Chang to present flags of appreciation to our honorable speakers as a way to express our gratitude and appreciation for their generosity and support. First, may I invite Dr. Chang to present an appreciation flag to Dr. Amy Johnson Binder from the US. Thank you, Dr. Binder for your great support. Next, may Dr. Chan please present an appreciation flag to Ms. Magdalena Nawareka from Poland. Thank you. Now, may I invite Dr. Chan to present an appreciation flag to Ms. Wu Shi Ying from Taiwan. May I please invite Dr. Chan to present an appreciation flag to Mr. Eddie Lee from Hong Kong. Thank you so much, everyone. To mark this memorable event, we will take a virtual group photo together. Now, would everyone please position yourselves squarely in the photo and look directly at the lens of the camera for a few seconds. That's perfect. Thank you so much, everyone. So here's the format of today's academic forum. We will have a total of three sharing sessions each speaker will have approximately 25 to 30 minutes for their presentation. After that, it will come to the final part of the forum, which is a panel discussion. Now, without further ado, I'm excited to introduce to you our first expert speaker. Dr. Amy Johnson Bider is a faculty member at the University of North Florida, where she teaches animal assisted intervention classes through the Brooks College of Public Health and Department of Continuing Education, and is the former director of the Center for Human Animal Interventions at Oakland University. She is a licensed professional counselor in Michigan and is a certified dog trainer through Council of Professional Dog Trainers. In 2005, Dr. Bounder founded and still directs the non Profit animal assisted intervention program called Teachers Pets, Dogs and Kids Learning Together. This 20 hour program pairs troubled and at risk youth through the court and community mental health systems with harder to adopt shelter dogs for the benefit of both. Additionally, she is the competencies and ethics chair for the American Psychological Association's Human Animal Interaction Section 13 and chair and sorry, and co-chair of the Uniform Terminology Committee for the collaboration between International Association of Human Animal Interaction Organizations and Animal Assisted Intervention International. Over the years, Dr. Binder has published a number of journal articles and book chapters on the topic of animal assisted intervention. Today, she'll be sharing with us the need for uniform terminology in animal assisted intervention. Please join me in welcoming our first speaker, Dr. Amy Johnson Binder from the US. Dr. Binder, please. Okay. Uh, so good morning and uh, or afternoon for you. Uh, thank you for having me today. I am really honored to be here uh, with all of you um, and talking about such important uh, topics. So as far as today's presentation, I just want to start by talking about, um, we'll start with the 2003 literature review where LaJoy found 20 different definitions uh, to 12 different terms related to AAI. And these terms range from pet therapy, pet facilitated therapy, canine assisted therapy, animal assisted intervention, etc. And 15 years later, an unpublished analysis of AAI articles by Ashraf et al in 2018 found that out of 100 articles reviewed, only 18 of those articles used terminology and categories that accurately represented the work of the study. Another review of 78 studies 
by Wood et al. in 2021 included therapeutic interactions with equines. And this uh, review showed that the term hippotherapy had no less than 60 different definitions. And these are just a few examples of disjointed definitions that are being used around the world when discussing animal assisted interventions. As students or professionals interested in incorporating animals into their practices, imagine the confusion surrounding this lack of clarity uh, in the categories of AAI. What keyword do, do you use when you're typing in uh, a search for AAI? What, um, what category is the researcher using or claiming to use uh, within the study and is it accurate? Which term in general is correct? And this short talk will talk or will address a high level view of the need for consistent terms and definitions in AAI specific to the categories um, and umbrella term related um, and why this is important. And the topic is not new. Uh, for nearly two decades, leaders in the field have been calling for a consistent terminology and definitions within categories of AAI. And this is the area that we'll be discussing. So in the Ashraf literature review that I mentioned earlier, the, also, the authors also found that the number of terms doubled to that that LeJoy found. So LeJoy had found 12 terms for um, AAI and uh, more than a decade later, there were 50 terms for uh, AAI related content. Beck and Ketcher noted the need for consistent terms in 2003, and Kruger and Serpel published the need for definitions and theoretical foundations in 2006 and in 2010. Nancy Parrish Plass wrote about the need for clear definitions and the chaos that occurs without such definitions in 2014. And Animal Assisted Intervention International and the International Association for Human Animal Interactions Organizations uh, each formulated attempts uh, in defining terms and categories. Fine and Beck wrote that the non standardized terminology jeopardizes the rigor of research studies, making it difficult to compare and even replicate studies. Griffin et al. echoed that sentiment and noted that non standardized terminology also resulted in weak research designs and insufficient information about protocols. And in Fine's latest handbook on animal assisted therapy, he noted that the consistent addition of new terms where people are adding canine assisted, rat assisted, or just making up new terms in order to be seen as different from the field also uh, impacts or minimize the impact um, of the field and creates confusion. So why does it matter? Why do words matter? If it's all related to AAI, it's all the same thing, right? Terms are interchangeable. No, and here's why. It is vital as all professionals in AAI use uniform terminology. So let's consider that all professions have a lexicon that is used to convey concepts, research, practice. Think about listening to lawyers talk about law or physicians talking about the body and treatment protocols. AIs should be no different. When reviewing the literature, it is not uncommon to review studies that report having conducted animal assisted therapy when the interaction was clearly an activity or the research study does not necessarily describe the interaction, making it unclear if the category was correctly named. We can't even truly verify if the approach is effective if we don't know exactly in what environment the interaction occurred, the provider's qualifications, uh, the content of the interaction, the goals set for the client or the training of the animals. Not using a consistent terminology also complicates the establishment of standards, competencies, and credentialing of professionals and practice. So using terms that are not consistent is problematic in research and conducting literature reviews in the following ways. It makes replication of the study difficult, if not impossible. Theoretical foundations within the research may be different. There is a lack of clearly identified objectives and goals. Research sponsors, including universities and foundations, do not have clarity about terminology, goals, outcomes, protocols, etc which leads to further confusion within the literature and additional difficulty with professionals and science taking our work seriously. Same with journal articles. Those peer reviewing articles need to have this knowledge as well as they act as gatekeepers uh, to a uniform terminology. Here's where we currently are. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of this. Um, you can see what's there, but it shows where we have been using modality first language, animal assisted, therapy, animal-assisted 
social work. However, there has been a lot of backlash from professionals who believe that it should be profession first. For example, I'd introduced myself as a psychotherapist who includes animals in therapy in the way we might say that we're a psychologist who uses cognitive behavioral therapy, but this is up for debate. The lack of consistent terms affects the quality of the intervention, the validity of the research, how training qualifications and credentials are identified and aligning with standards of practice. Oftentimes, animal assisted interventions, the umbrella term you see at the top, has been used as the catch all term. Within the field, AI is meant to describe a spectrum of services. A provider who works with an animal would not use AI as a descriptor, but would use one of the categories to define the work. And without this consistency in terms, it becomes a lack of transparency for the public, healthcare and educational facilities, uh, and insurance companies about the content and quality of the interaction, as well as the qualifications and expertise of the professional. Additionally, having a fragmented lexicon impairs research and impedes the comparison of studies, as I've mentioned. How can we show whether a modality such as animal-assisted therapy is effective if it cannot be accurately defined? If the provider's qualifications are not determined, and how can we be sure that any standards or guidelines are met or even effective? And this is the complication within the literature and, again, in aligning with standards of practice. So here are the latest and most often used definitions, uh, the ones that you have most likely seen as you did the research. And I'll go through these quickly, just paraphrasing um, so that I can share with you a global, uh, a global collaborative effort uh, that is working to modify and streamline these categories. So AAI, Animal Assisted Intervention, is currently used as the umbrella term for the inclusion of animals that are uh, in interventions that are goal-directed uh, with benefits to the humans. It is not used as a category of work. Again, uh, for example, we would not say that we are conducting an animal assisted intervention. This is where it becomes problematic within the literature because this term is used when the category might actually be an animal assisted activity. This is the most common one that we see within the literature that if there is someone uh, working in a visitation program or a visitation in a waiting room or working in a dentist office and they don't want to say that they're doing an animal assisted activity, so they'll use the umbrella term animal assisted intervention, which again is not something that we can, can quantify necessarily, um, and it just makes the, the transparency less likely in the, the research or in the study. Animal assisted therapy is a goal-directed, planned, and structured intervention delivered by a health and human service professional where progress is measured and included in the documentation. The benefits are for the human and the provider has adequate knowledge about behavior, needs, health, and indicators of stress of the animals involved. Animal assisted education is goal oriented and delivered by educational and related service professionals, such as teachers, uh, etc. The focus of the activities are on academic goals, pro-social skills, and cognitive functioning. The provider has adequate knowledge about behavior, needs, health, and indicators of stress of the animals involved and animal assisted activities. Still paraphrasing, uh, animal assisted activities are goal oriented informal interactions and visitation programs delivered by a human animal team for motivational, educational and recreational purposes. And this is usually done in a visitation um, and or volunteering capacity. The person delivering the services has adequate knowledge about behavior, needs, health and indicators of stress of the animals involved. And you'll note that throughout each. That's how we are trying to, or how the um, organization is trying to ensure that there is animal welfare within uh, the practice. It's important to note that animal assisted therapy is not a standalone career, but it is a comp it is complementary to the therapy work already being done. We have to ensure that we're not overselling what we're doing. Without the education, the credentials, licensure, or degree, one cannot be an animal assisted therapist. While including animals in practice has therapeutic value, it does not automatically make it therapy. And there is no doubt that any interaction with an animal is therapeutic or can be therapeutic if it is not conducted by a degreed, credentialed, or licensed professional, it cannot be considered therapy. And there is risk of spreading confusion, there's poor protection of clients, insurance pitfalls, and obstacles in the advancement of science when we do so. 
again, while a dog visit among uh, patients in the hospital can definitely be therapeutic, it is not necessarily animal assisted therapy. And this is what we see a lot um, that because there is a therapeutic value, the, the terminology is shifted so that the individuals think they're receiving therapy. It's very common where, oh, this is my therapy because the dog came in to visit me, but that's not therapy. It's part of the healing process, but not a structured goal-oriented um, interaction. Um, again, so hence it can be misleading. We do have to remember that it is not the animal that is doing the therapy and implying that the animal is the healer is also misleading and not legally accurate. The animal may pave the way for change, but it is not, it is the education, skills, knowledge, and experience of the professional, of you, that guides the process for change. So there's currently a large scale effort to align animal assisted terminology globally. The International Association for Human Animal Interactions Organizations, IHIO, and Animal Assisted Intervention International, AAII, uh, began a collaboration in 2020 to join efforts with other professionals and professional organizations around the world to determine the most appropriate uniform terminology definitions and criteria for conducting AAI. We brought in more than 100 committee members who work on one or more subcommittees in the areas of uniform terminology, therapy animal terminology, government regulations, and continuing education. Preliminary work was presented at workshops for the International Society for Anthrozoology, IHIO, and a webinar for the American Psychological Association's Human Animal Interaction, uh, Section 13 of Division 17. And we expect to have a document of recommendations for terminology released this fall. The uh, IHIO and AAII collaboration uh, started by reviewing six. Uh, international definitions of AAI in the categories. And we were interested in seeing what the similarities and the differences were um, in organizational terminology. The inclusion criteria was that it was an active website, came up in a search for AAI. It was in English or could be Google translated to English. It included actual terminology and definitions published on the website. In organizations in specific countries run by the government that had included at least three categories of AAIs, visiting, professional health care, human service, and education in membership or scope, or the public international AAI organizations that included at least three categories of AAIs, mm -hmm. and the organization had at least five years experience to have gained working knowledge in AAI. The results of that review found that the criteria for practitioners may not be the same in every country, that certification of animal uh, and or human has different meaning, like a certificate is the completion of education uh, in a specific area. The certification is done by an outside agency or organization that is testing and evaluating uh, that you've met a certain criteria and there is a continuing education component to that. So certification and certificate have very different meanings and different meanings in other parts of the world. Governmental agencies may have terminology or criteria already in place, which makes it difficult to do any changing of uh, the lexicon. Language and cultural differences mean there are different meanings and significance within the definitions. And certain human service disciplines may not fall under the category of therapy, so may not use the term AAT legally. For example, in the US, uh, social workers can conduct counseling and bill for services, whereas in other parts of the world, social work is social workers cannot. Or in, uh, in Europe, uh, animal assisted coaching is um, prevalent. Whereas in the US, uh, a coach, there is no credential or licensure or any um, anything that says that they can bill professionally or can be uh, work under the therapeutic guidelines. And definitions did not factor in animal welfare. Um, only one or two of the categories actually considered the animal welfare side within the definition. So the committees are expected to provide their recommendations next month and publish recommendations for terminology by the end of the year. Along with our efforts, many professionals have heard this call and taken action. In 2020, at the ISAS half-day workshop uh, presented by Tiffany Howell and Pauline Bennett of Australia, 
uh, was designed to discuss and recommend terminology for assistance animals and those uh, working in AAIs, specifically uh, the discussion around the term therapy animal, which has been problematic um, as well in the field. In 2020, Wood et al. published recommendations for consistent terminology when working with equines. And in 2021, IHIO and AAII presented a half-day workshop at the IHIO conference um, on the definitions and terminology. And also in 2021, the IHIO and AAII collaboration that I've been talking about launched the International Consortium of AAI, known as ICAAI, where AAI providers around the world are able to join committee members and provide input. We have um, a closed Facebook group, so any of you that would want to join that, you're welcome to. Uh, you, you'll have access to the materials um, and reviewing materials and just getting an update of where we are in the process. The second um, area that's problematic, um, and this could be a, a webinar all day itself, but the terms uh, service animal, assistance animal, therapy dog, therapy animal, emotional support animal are oftentimes used synonymously or interchangeably, and that is very inaccurate and misleading as well. Um, so I just wanna go over the simplest of distinctions um, here. So assistance animals, are, is the umbrella term for uh, animals that guide our guide dogs, or guide animal service animals hearing. Uh, usually they are dogs, almost always dogs. They are now accepting um, mini horses in under that um, category. Um, the Americans with Disabilities Act uh, define assistance dogs as those who are individually trained and have specialized training to perform at least one task to benefit an individual with a disability, including a physical, sensory, psychiatric, intellectual, or mental disability. Assistance dogs are an extension of the human and have public accessibility and more legal protection as far as access to public space. Um, in Hong Kong, guide dogs are allowed on public transportation and in public spaces like restaurants, markets, etc. The animals work for one human and typically cannot be distracted from their work. Service dogs are not, are also not therapy dogs. Uh, again, it's very common for people to say, oh, this is my service dog who's also a therapy dog. And it can be very uh, confusing for dogs who are working and then not working, um, handleable, not handleable. So it, um, it's challenging for the dog and for the humans. And then therapy dog. Um, dogs who work in AAI settings are or should be prepared, evaluated, and registered through a uh, reputable AAI organization. Dogs are most commonly included in AAI work, but pet partners will evaluate and register nine species, including dogs, cats, horses, donkeys, rats, mini pigs, llamas and alpacas, birds, guinea pigs, and rabbits. They benefit humans in uh, physical, social, emotional, and cognitive functioning. And a dog who participates in AAI is commonly referred to as a therapy dog. But this is a term, again, that's being reconsidered in the field because it's not accurate. Therapy dog implies that the dog is conducting therapy, which is not the case. Even when the dog or animal is working with us as clinicians, it is still our licensure, our credentials, our education that allows us to conduct the therapy. And there is another committee uh, within the organ uh, the consortium that is working on this issue. It's another debatable one. It's I think it'll be a hard one to um, convince people to use other alternative words because it's a very um, long held valued word. And emotional support dogs or emotional support animals um, are any animal who provides support, comfort, relieve loneliness, ease anxiety, but have not been especially trained. This is essentially a pet, right? All of our pets are um, provide us emotional support. In the US, these are, are really common um, on campuses um, and in housing. In the US, uh, United or the airlines in the Department of Transportation um, starting February 2021 no longer allows uh, ESAs to fly. They consider ESAs pets um, and unless they are trained to do a specific task and are considered a psychiatric service dog or a service dog are no longer eligible to fly um, as a service animal. Uh, they are, however, uh, able to live in housing where uh, otherwise they would not be allowed to live. 
which is why they're popular on campus. And again, there's a lot of larger problematic terms within the industry, but I have limited time. So these are the ones I'm gonna focus on today. If you're looking to read more about quality standards that include current definitions, here are a few um, resources. There have been uh, published quality standards by several international organizations, including IHIO, who has developed a quality standards um, for AAI, as well as for small animals and farm animals. Uh, Animal Assisted Intervention International has a really nice set of guidelines and standards of practice on their website. And the American Counseling Association was the first to endorse a set of competencies uh, specific to animal assisted interventions. Other quality standards uh, come from the International Society of uh, Animal Assisted Therapy, or ISAT, uh, ESAT, the Accreditation of Curricula for Education for Practitioners, uh, PATH, International Standards for Certification and Accreditation. This is for uh, equines, people working with horses uh, or donkeys. EGALA has a global standard for equine assisted psychotherapy and animal assisted intervention uh, quality register uh, in the Netherlands. Um, so that is all that I have time for today, but I'm happy to uh, answer any additional questions uh, during the Q&A at the end. And I wanna thank you for your time. So thank you, Dr. Binder, for showing us the importance of using appropriate AAI terminology as to maintain the standard and to accurately promote and advance the field. We will now move on to the second presentation of today, which will be delivered by Ms. Magdalena Nararecka from Poland. Ms. Magdalena Nararecka is the president of the Animals for People Association in Poland. She's an AAI instructor who conducts interventions and trains human dog teams to work in a wide range of facilities. Together with her team, she has successfully collaborated with children's hospitals in Poland to make AAI a more popular tool that supports children in long-term treatment programs. In collaboration with a local specialized clinic, the team has also started a dog-assisted therapy program for children in a coma. Since 2010, Ms. Nawareka has been a co-founder, official evaluator, and instructor of the evaluation system of the personality assessment for dogs in animal assisted intervention, short for PADA, where she is responsible for evaluating the suitability of dogs for AI services. In recent years, she's also the co-founder and therapist of a local Alzheimer's patients program, where she works with her own therapy dogs with a team of volunteers to provide animal assisted patient care and support. Her topic today is personality assessment for dogs in animal assisted intervention PADA, a standardized practice in Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming our next speaker, Ms. Nararecka from Poland. Ms. Nararecka, please. Um, so here are my contact information. If any of you have questions or want to share some thoughts, please feel free to contact me after the lecture. I will say um, several words about need of standardization in Europe because this is quite a big continent. We have a lot of countries and uh, none of these countries instead of Italy has law regulations according to animal assisted interventions. In each country, we have a lot of small organizations that are working with animal assisted intervention uh, and there is no common standard. So actually we have very qualified teams with high uh, experience and high education. Mm. And in the same time, we have teams who have actually no education. This is only, you know, a person who decided that she or he wants to be a handler in animal assisted intervention team. So the person is starting to work with uh, no qualification and that is dangerous for clients and it's against dog's welfare also. Um, we started uh, our collaboration with um, in Poland, we decided that we are looking for partners uh, outside of Poland because we don't have any common laws or regulations and we found very nice uh, partnership in Norway. So now we are building a very strong alliance together with Norwegian partner. We started with some uh, common exams and trainings, but then 
we, we realized that the very important thing uh, in our work is to have proper screening for dogs. Uh, so we, uh, we can be sure that dogs who are working in animal assisted interventions are properly chosen for this work. Um, there was no test that was standardized or scientifically proven before. So we decided to build a partnership together also with Hungary, with Adam Miklosi's university. And with these three countries, we developed the PADA certification process um, that allows us to choose proper dogs for animal assisted intervention. I will talk uh, about the PADA certification a little uh, more in future slides. But what's important uh, that we started this process 19, eight, uh, 2018. Uh, PADA was published 2020. And since that time, we have several more countries who joined. Uh, we have evaluators in different countries, so we can use their experience and their organizations to make this idea be more popular. And if we have more dogs who are screened with PADA, we have bigger database, we can compare the results um, and see the differences between countries and the differences between breeds, how the dogs are working. Um, but I think this is a very nice tool who, which allows us to um, screen the dogs properly. Uh, we have done standardized mental tests for dogs, so that's PADA. Uh, and we are working on standardized training for dogs, also connected, that's connecting instructor use similar methods. Uh, so that allows us also to compare the results of work because we have all the same terminology. And that's very important as uh, Amy mentioned before, but we have also the similar, very similar methods of training and conducting IAI. And we have standardized certification. So PADA is the first step and then we have uh, common exams. We are also working on standardization in cats. It's again, Poland, Norway, and we invited for that project also Switzerland uh, and Romania. So we have strong partnership with um, Professor Denis Turner with university from Cluj Napoca in Romania. And together we are working on similar program as we have for dogs. So screening test and um, certification process for cat teams. And I think that that would be released in 2024. So we are working on standardized behavioral tests for cats, uh, standardized training for cats, and also standardized certification. So we will have similar resources that we have in dogs. We can compare teams and their experience between the countries. Uh, the goal of the PADA project um, was to introduce uh, the dog testing system based on scientific research. So we have kind of certainty that this program, this uh, screening test will work and that we can reply it in different countries with different dogs and we, have, uh, we will get similar results. Um, the system allows us to select dogs uh, based on their psyche and physical conditions and we, are, we can check will the dog be safe at work or not. And why it's important to use uh, tests for dogs. Uh, first of all, it's uh, taking care of dogs' welfare, because if we choose the appropriate dog who is safe and secure, the, he will handle the situation, the animal estate intervention, he will handle the, the stress, so the welfare will not be in danger. It's also taking care for patients' welfare as if the dog is safe and secure, it won't be dangerous for clients. We are also looking in PADA test for dogs who are social and who really enjoy um, contact with people. So that would be beneficial for patients if they have contact with dogs who are properly uh, prepared for the intervention. Uh, PADA test also allows us to match human dog team to proper activity. During the test, we can see uh, strengths of the dog and also weaknesses and challenges. So the instructor is able to say what kind of intervention the dog should uh, take part. For example, we can match the dog to education or to um, coaching sessions. We can uh, suggest that the dog should work with elderly patients of, or with children. So that is a uh, big help for handlers, especially those who are just in the beginning of their way. 
And PADA test is also the first step of education in animal assisted intervention because handler gets some basic knowledge before the test. And then after the test, uh, they have quite a big feedback about the dog and the relationship they have together. Also challenges that they need to work on. So this is a very nice help for the participants who are taking the PADA test. Actually, the welfare issue is very important for us. Uh, we are working and we are very into the One Health uh, thread. So we believe that uh, we need to consider welfare of all participants of animal assisted intervention, uh, like um, people who are involved, so patients, but also handler, uh, welfare of the animal, and also the environment that we are working in. And when we consider all those aspects or three, three aspects, that would make intervention be successful. Because if you are focused only on clients' welfare and we are really into you know, helping children or helping um, elderly people in their needs and forget about the dog, the intervention won't be successful and um, it will not work. During working on PADA certification process, uh, there were several risks and difficulties because we wanted to try really new ap approach. No one did this before. I mean, no one did the international alias working on scientific um, research and test for, men for dogs to screen their personality. We struggled with language barrier because uh, the partnership was uh, built on Polish, Norwegian and Hungarian partners with actually none of these uh, countries is um, English speaking from the beginning. Yeah, So this is foreign, foreign language for all of us. So we, of course, have language barriers. Uh, each of the organizations have different backgrounds and different understanding of the same task. So uh, different was uh, Adam Miklosi approach for the topic and different was ours as we are more practitioners. And of course, uh, Adam Miklosi's team, they were looking as uh, researchers. And we have also limited time. We have about two years to prepare the program and to prepare research and also the follow up to work on them and to benefit from them. It was really professional alliance with uh, great skills of each of the partner organization. Uh, different approach was not only the weakness, but also the strength of, uh, of the project because we have had deeper insight into the problems. Um, we could have observed different dogs and it's really important because in different countries in Europe, we have different um, thinking of dog training. So the dogs have a little bit different backgrounds, uh, relations, training methods. So we can observe how PADA is working also in cultural differences and with, diff with different dogs history of training. Um, we could compare how this program from the beginning till the end is working in different cultures and uh, what are the risks when we are providing this kind of um, tests to, to the handlers. And of course, we used a lot of different backgrounds in our cooperation. So each partner has a little bit different knowledge, a little bit different resources that we could use for our program. And then we developed the PADA protocol. So I can proudly introduce you the, the PADA handbook and uh, the tools that we worked on. Um, but how does it work actually, the, the PADA protocol? So we developed 18 exercises. Each of them uh, is designed to see what is dog's decision in the situation. So we are looking on sociability of the dog. We are looking on boldness. We are looking for um, resourcing of uh, mm, yeah, <laughs> resources, uh, guarding resources, sorry. And we are looking for willing to work with people. All the 18 exercises are based on natural situations that can be met in everyday life, but also that can be met during the um, interventions but we do not force dog to do anything. We just observe the situations. And uh, the test is observed and video recorded by a professional team. In each team, we have evaluator who is very um, skilled and educated person. It has, uh, she or he has to have uh, years of experience in 
dog training or in animal assisted intervention, we are looking for ethologists actually who have also higher education in dogs and they can understand dogs behavior very well. And then the person gets the professional training in PADA and is able to assess uh, dogs behavior during the test. All these 18 exercises um, are made uh, in such a way that the dog is free to take decision. Of course, we want to see, for example, how the dog behaves while it's petting, it's petted. So the evaluator, for example, is uh, saying hello to the dog and tries to pet the dog. But uh, the dog is free to choose, okay, I don't want to take part in this exercise. I want to go away and do something else. And that's also possible during the test. Of course, we are looking for the dogs who are choosing contact with people. We are looking for the dogs who feel safe and secure in the new environment because the test is in a specific environment. It's a novel place for the dog. So we are looking also how the dog interacts with the environment, how, uh, how fast is uh, the dog able to cope with uh, new things that are happening around. What is uh, the dog's attitude to strangers who are nice or sometimes not so nice because the person is trying to hug the dog or to say hello in not a very nice way to do some veterinary exams also. So the dog uh, have very different choices to, to make. If you are interested more in PADA, here you can see the QR code. Uh, if you scan it, you will be redirected to our handbook it's free to use, so it's free to also read and learn about PADA. Every step, every exercise in PADA protocol is uh, written there. So you can also read about uh, each exercise and about the background behind the PADA certification. I think it's very interesting to see and compare to the programs that you have in your own countries uh, and see how we are doing it in Europe. Maybe that would be also an inspiration, but I'm, I'm really interested how it's uh, working in different countries. So if you have any false ideas, I'm really looking for some messages from you. Why do we use PADA actually in our countries? Uh, first of all, it's standardized. Uh, so we can use it in different countries, in different organizations with different dogs, and we can compare results. So it's very useful tool for research and uh, for science. This is scientific uh, protocol. So it has scientific background. It was researched. Uh, we have results uh, that this is, um, the test was checked how it's working. It's quite easy to use. Um, so you have the handbook, the manual that I've shared with you on the previous slide. And we have prepared application that you can use on your mobile phone um, to screen the dog. And the results are easily saved in the database. And the application and the database allows us to search for different results and compare them between the dogs. Uh, this is also a complete tool. So uh, yeah, you have the manual, you have the application and it's working together very nice. Um, PADA protocol also meet Ohio guidelines. So we were reading the guidelines carefully. We uh, were using the definitions in our language also. So it's uh, quite nice that we can use the same wording in different countries and to have the same foundation for what we are doing. And we believe that it also helps science uh, because we have the database, the international database um, that we can work with uh, and we can use later on for different research and different scientific programs. It's also nice that we can compare what kind of dogs are working in different countries, what kind of breeds and how they are coping with the situation. We really want to develop the project in the future. So we are looking for partners who are interested in collaboration. We are looking in, uh, for evaluators who can screen the dogs all over the world uh, and want to do the training to, to get used to the tool. And we are looking for researchers who want to put their input into the PADA research program. So if some of you want to join us, please, uh, please contact me. PADA evaluator training um, is the 
path that you have to step in if you want to be a PADA evaluator and join the, the PADA team. So we are looking for people who have higher education in ethology or equal education, because in some countries, uh, in, including Poland, um, ethology education is not so common. I mean, we do not have many universities that provide this kind of education. Uh, it's just in the beginning uh, of our way there. I mean, some universities just started to have ethology faculty. Yeah? So it could be also the equal education. That means that you can have uh, different courses or years of experience. And yeah, if you send this in your resume, uh, the PADA team will consider that this is also proper education to, to join the PADA. Mm. Mm, then you have to fulfill PADA online course with um, four steps of different courses with about animal estate intervention, dog behavior, dog um, cognition. And then we have also PADA practical camp, training camp, when we meet, meet each other and we're working together, testing dogs, uh, having workshops, discussions, and trying to analyze the situation together. And this is really fantastic opportunity to learn very much about uh, dogs personality because you meet different experts from different countries and you can use the knowledge uh, from different person. Uh, during the training camp we have some lectures, workshops, group activities. We also test different dogs to observe how to prepare the test live because it's uh, quite easy and um, understandable when you see the video from the test uh, during the online course. But then if you have to prepare it by yourself and assess the dog with the app and look uh, at the dog's behavior, handler's behavior, you have to talk to the team and do all the activities connected uh, with the test. It's um, a little bit more complicated. So it's nice that we have the possibility to train it together and to give the supervision afterwards. So each person who is attending the practical training also is supervised by experts who have years of experience in providing PADA. And PADA is the first step for our dog certification path. So each dog who is certified as a therapy dog or educational dog or visiting dog needs to have PADA as the first step because PADA is kind of um, foundation, uh, kind of um, statement that this, this dog has proper mentality for working in AI. If the dog hasn't have proper mentality for AI, we shouldn't train it into it and we shouldn't work with this dog with clients because that could be against the dog's welfare or against power, patient safety. So if the dog has the PADA mental test and then uh, is able to join the training, we are doing the training and certification for the team. Mental test is mostly for the dog. Of course, the dog is, uh, during the test, the dog is together with his or her handler. But uh, what we are looking for are the dog's decisions. So is the dog happy to join human companion or is not happy about it? Is the dog happy to enter new environment or is a little bit afraid? Is the dog uh, guarding resources like food or toys or is willing to share with uh, stranger people and so on and so on. Uh, on PADA, we observe dog's decisions and dog's behaviors. We ask handlers not to interrupt, not to give any commands, not to um, interact with the dog all the time. Of course, they can give some kind of support. If the dog is asking the handler for support, of course, the handler is, uh, is there and can support the dog. But we are asking handlers to avoid any activity and any actions towards the dog. So we can see dog's decisions. But during the training and certification process, we, of course, working both with the dog and with the handler because um, Human dog team in animal assisted intervention is a team. No, Amy was talking about it also, that the dog itself will not provide intervention and the human itself without dog will not provide animal assisted intervention. Yeah, So that's why the training and certification is developed for the team 
and this is it covers practical training with the dog and also theoretical knowledge about how to provide intervention, how to uh, speak with clients, how to support them, how to take care of dog's welfare and so on and so on. But uh, certification and exams are designed to be uh, made for human and dog together. To become certified team, you need to start with AAI, edu AAI education. Um, so the basic training for visiting teams. And then you have exam, the practical exam for visiting teams uh, that covers um, ability of uh, going to the facility with the dog, um, organizing uh, the place for work and short interaction with the client. So uh, both dog and the human part of the team needs to show that they know how to work with stranger clients and they are able to provide nice intervention. Then they can uh, start higher education. So uh, animal um, assisted education, animal assisted therapy training. And this is dedicated actually for professionals. So not only we provide exams, but also we are looking for people who have higher education in education or therapy or any other um, higher education that gives you knowledge how to work with clients. Because if you want to work in psychiatric uh, hospital, you need to know something about psychiatric patients. It's not only the matter of doing AI course, it's also the matter of your professional background. Uh, so we are looking for professionals, giving them um, courses and training, and then they have exam. It's also the practical exam. So together with the dog, uh, the team needs to provide um, kind of intervention that they can show their knowledge in education or therapy. We are also building uh, informal network all over the world. We have very nice platform that we are sharing experiences and knowledge. Uh, I invite you to visit the platform. It's icofacommunity.com. And you can find there is different articles and materials from different interventions, mostly with dogs, but also some materials about cats and other animals. And you can also ask the question or meet experts. So it's a platform that we can all share experiences and exchange knowledge. And I think it's really fantastic that the internet gives us this possibility that no matter where we live and what we are doing, we can meet together like today, for example, yeah, discuss, share experiences and grow together. Thank you for your attention. It was really nice, uh, nice meeting, nice lecture. And I'm really happy that I was able to share my experiences here with you today. Thank you, Ms. Narweka, for the inspirational presentation about the evaluation system PADA as a way to fill the gap in AI protocols in Poland. Now joining us today for the last presentation is Ms. Shi Yinwu from Taiwan. Ms. Shi Yinwu is a counselor with a background in social work. She walked into the world of animals during college where she saw the power of human animal relationships. In 2015, she and her partners founded the Healing Dog Psychology Studio, which became the first psychological goal-oriented animal assisted therapy unit in Taiwan with hundreds of speeches and more than 100 direct service hours provided to the community every year. Ms. Wu has extensive experience in working with children and adolescents, in particular, children with special needs, such as autism, ADHD, and selective mutism. She also brings healing dogs to placement agencies for group counseling. In 2022, Ms. Wu and her team, including five healing dogs, established a new psychological counseling center called Encounter AI Counseling Center to continue to develop the field of animal assisted therapy in Taiwan and to support more individuals who may be benefit from the power of the human animal bond. In her presentation today, Ms. Wu will be sharing with us healing dogs as an example of professional development in animal assisted intervention in Taiwan. Ladies and gentlemen, Please join me in welcoming our last speaker, Ms. Shi Yin Wu from Taiwan. 
Ms. Wu, please. Thank you, thank you, Eddie, for inviting me. It's my honor to here to uh, introduce my share my uh, experience in Taiwan here. And uh, this 20, 20 minutes, I want to uh, introduce my my group, my group, my my teams, and my uh, experience and what we do in Taiwan to share with you. So uh, I am I'm Wu Shiying. My Chinese name is Wu Shiying. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and I'm a counselor in Taiwan, but. Uh, I'm also a co-founder of, of Encounter AI Counseling Center, is which the, which is the, in Taiwan is the first counseling center that we do AI work with counseling. Yeah, and uh, I I study I study psychology and also social work in university, and and I have I have a dog that in that time is. In the picture, pictures, her name is Piu Piu. It's a Shiba. Is everyone see it? She her? Yeah. She is she's very beautiful. And uh, she's my first dog in my life. And she's very quiet, very nice, and very kind. And I think like my life is changed because from her. Like uh I I was healing by her. Like I like to live with her and I walk, uh, walk, walk with her all the times. I talk to her and I share my secret to her. Yeah, all the times. And I found like uh, some, something changed because uh, after I have, I have Pew Pew because the people uh, in my, around me, they, they, they are all very interesting about her. And they they start to ask me something about her. What's her name? What's her age? And can I can I touch her? So it it is very interesting to me that I'm interesting like uh what it happened. Then seven years ago, I Google the uh, on the internet that I find a lot of a lot of information about AAI. So my partners and I start to uh, research and start to work about this. So I think she, Piu Piu, maybe she is also the co-founder, co-founder dog in, in our uh, organization, yeah. And beginning from Piu Piu, we, we start to incorporate dogs into our counseling work in 2012. We start trying to and study that how how does it work from this AAI is what is happen and twenty fifteen uh, healing dog psychology studio was established in Hualien and we 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 have uh, a lot uh, we have seven people we we need to try an organization this then we. Uh, we moved to Taichung, another city in Taiwan, and officially owns a space in 2016. We rent a house that above two floors. Now we, ha we have a new class and uh, office and uh, the dog is live uh, uh, this year, 2023, 2022, 2022, we, we have uh, become an encounter a, a, a counseling center. Uh, in Taizong, and we move, we move our home to become a bigger play, bigger space, and I will show you later. Yeah, it's our history to start. Everything start from 10, 2012, and it's not easy for these ten years. Uh, this is our group introduction. It's our uh professional here is for for human partners. <laughs> Yeah, we have three social worker, and there's is some others, and this is our dog's partners. We call healing dog. Uh, in Taiwan, every organization has different names of, about dog, like uh therapy dog, doctor dog, but uh, and our organization we call healing dog. But it's their work is sometimes as the same. Some some dogs do AAI or some dogs do AAT or AAE. Yeah. And we have four dogs. And this is another one. 
a little puppy called her name is Ai Chao. It's a herbal plant about the Dragon Ball Festival because she come from that time. Yeah. And she's is still in training because she's only one year old. And we have another friend. Uh, it's a cat. Her name is Tennis. She is not in training. She's just the uh always look around and she's very but she's very kind and nice to people and she's uh always social and say hello to everyone who is come come to our place and come to our center and everyone like likes her yeah uh healing those condition and training is uh, about three point about the mental health physical health and the uh, unique and uh, HAB. We think that the unique is very important that we hope the dogs uh, to be real, but not to be perfect. Uh, just like another walk walking dog, like guide dog or uh, assistive dogs, they always be very professional to following their handler. But we ho hope the healing dog because they do the psychological work they can. They need to be very real. So five dogs. They are have very different, uh, special breed, different, uh, different personality. Some is very uh, patient. Some is variant. So they don't need to be perfect. And it's it's good for us to uh combine the dogs with the client. It's helpful. And the HAB is very important too. The dogs here, they live here and we take care of them by ourselves. Uh, we always walk the dog, feed them and, and grooming all the times to need to, because uh, we work with the healing dogs and we need to be a good relationship with them. So uh, it's the healing, healing dogs training and condition. And the space introduction is we have several uh, space here. This is here. Here is the waiting room. The parents always take their kids or children here, and they were living uh, sitting here to waiting their child. And this is the place that the dogs live here. They have their own. They all live here, but they. They, every everyone every dogs have their own space because uh, they they feel safe and they feel comfortable inside. They will eat and sleep inside, but most of the time they will come outside and just be free and play with other dogs. And here's the counseling rooms. We have two counseling rooms. Uh, to do AAT here. And the special is every room here, we have the dog's bed here and dog's uh, water bowl. They can drink or anytime if they want and they can uh, go to the bed to take a rest. When they go to stop, uh, touch them or talk to them, they need to, means dog needs to take a rest and client need to cooperate. And there is a, a, another play therapy room. We do AAPT, animal, animal therapy, para, uh, play therapy to, with dog, healing dogs. And uh, we also have a special uh, corner for cats and animal. The te tennis can go inside and people can go inside too to visit tennis and play with her or just sit with her and take a look. But, but uh, let, the dog, let, let the cat to feel free is very important because the animals uh, with her is very important to us. Another corner is to uh, take a rest. Like the parents can sit here too. Okay, it's the space uh, introduction. And our service is uh, four, four kinds of our service. It's AATC, AAPT, AAE, and AAA. Let me show you some pictures. Uh, we 
do and uh, AATC all the times and uh, two kind of one kind is the one by one or maybe we can we can say two by one because uh, one counselor and one healing dog will go inside with one client yeah and uh, we talk about we talk a different counseling depend on their goals. And another one is the group counseling. It also happened here. And for kids and children, so we have AAPT that uh, kids can play with dogs, feed them, cook for them, or just the dogs sometimes become a doctor. Yeah, they have their image games. It's very interesting. So uh, the, the com common client issues is most of our uh, clients is ASD, ADHD, or SM. And sometimes some developmental delays uh, child. And some other issues is like uh, so school refusal, emotional distress, interpersonal relationship, and self exploration and loss, uh, special, especially from the people who lost their pets and they, they need to, they need some counseling. Uh, about the AAE, we have some speech, but we also have some camp in every uh, winter and summer. We have the uh, summer camp, winter camp, that we help we help people, uh, children to become the healing dog's owner. They take the responsibility to take care of the dog. So they need to work the dog. They need to uh, check the dog. Is, is that everything okay? They need to free feed them, grooming, and, and check if they're pee or poo. <laughs> so they need to clean up by themselves. And we have a lot of speech about AAA that we, uh, the, the most topic is about the uh, animal welfare. Uh, we hope kids to understand how to be friends with dogs and how to uh, touch them, how to observe their body language. Is like they are friendly or not? Is or, or the dog is very nervous. And the speech is go, we go to every elementary school, high school, or college. Yeah, this is what as our, our work too. So that's my, uh, it's my sharing. And I think that animal and children are weakly in society and they can't speak for themselves. But we provide a, a place where they can see their street in each other. And that's why we call encounter. Okay, thank you for your listening. And here is our QR code. If you are interested about more information of us, you can scan the QR code. The, uh, up, up, uh, the first one is the website and Instagram or Facebook. Thank you for your listening. Thank you. Thank you so much, Miss Wu, for sharing about your inspirational work of healing dogs as an example of professional development of animal-assisted therapy in Taiwan. Once again, thank you so much to our expert speakers for sharing their valuable expertise and experience today. We've learned so much about the field of animal-assisted intervention from everyone. Now, we are excited to move on to the final part of the forum, which is a panel discussion with all of our expert speakers about the future of animal-assisted intervention. We are very pleased to have Mr. Eddie Lee, who will be moderating the panel discussion for us. Mr. Lee is the founder of Hong Kong Institute of Annual Assisted Intervention, which is a program partner of our school's innovative program, Higher Diploma in Pet Care and Animal Assisted Therapy. He's a certified Animal Assisted Intervention Specialist, a Pet Partners Therapy Dog International Evaluator, a certified professional dog and cat trainer and behavior consultant, and a pet loss and bereavement counselor. Let's welcome Mr. Eddie Lee. And may we also invite our honorable speakers to join us for the panel discussion. Thank you very much, Sarah Chin. 
So um, maybe you can observe in, in another camera, you can see there my partners working there. Uh, the black one I will introduce it very soon. So good afternoon. I thank you very much to all of you for investigating your time with us, sharing the importance and professionalism in AI. So um, maybe I introduce my partner first. Uh, in another camera, you can see uh, Tam Teng Ayi. Uh, this is a Cantonese pronunciation. Uh, both of them are rescued dogs. Tam Teng uh, was rescued in 2013 and R Yi. Yeah, into one four con consecutively. Tam Ding is a Cantonese pronunciation means uh, he's with nice and very calm temper. And R Yi in Cantonese uh, means that the second one, because when I rescued him, he was together uh, with his two other siblings. So uh, at that time, three doggies are being rescued and he's the second one uh, I came into contact, so uh, he was named Ayi. And both of them qualified by uh, passing the formal animal assisted intervention dogs evaluation. And the third one is my partner's dog, Atao. Uh, her name in full in Cantonese is Chek Siu Tao. It is a kind of bean uh, called rice bean in English. Uh, in Chinese healthy diet, uh, this is good in the healthy recipe uh, to adjust your body. Uh, water content, it will make you uh, healthier because her uh, owner, Alice, is an animal nutritionist, uh, so she pay attention to healthy diet very much. And her other animals, uh, he also have other dogs and cats, all named with the uh, name of healthy recipe ingredients. Okay, so during these years, I witnessed the race of public awareness of animal welfare and the positive impact brought to the society by different kinds of human animal interaction in Hong Kong here, as well as internationally, of course. In view of this, uh, I wish to step up the public education of human-animal interaction or relationships and wish to provide structured um, AI service locally. Uh, because in the past, uh, we do have a lot of uh, different kind of animal services in Hong Kong, uh, but not all of them or I dare to say uh, a majority of them in the past is not really very structured. They have very good intention, uh, but according to what you have just listened to in the past hour, uh, other Amy shared about the terminology, some definitions um, at the dinner, shared about how to assess, uh, and Ms. Wu shared how to uh, make it into action. So uh, these are more structured than in the past. So I wish to make it uh, happen in more structured way in Hong Kong that can benefit uh, human and animal both ways. So um, I founded the Hong Kong Institute of Animal uh, Assisted Intervention, in short, HKIAAI. And now uh, the organization is a registered uh, charity in Hong Kong. And after we stepped up the public education and promotion, uh, the medias and many human service providers are uh, being coached into this area. And they show uh, very uh, keen interest in the service. And we keep growing together with other organizations uh, that are serving in AI in Hong Kong. And of course, uh, international connection is very important. So I'm very glad that uh, I learned a lot from Amy and Madanena, and we have uh, kept very close connection to the standard and the ethic practice in AI. And in 2018, HKIAI connected with uh, HKNU Li Pace, uh, formerly we call the uh, Open University in Hong Kong. Uh, of, and we worked together in launching the first F academic course you just heard before. Uh, it is called the Higher Diploma in Pet Care and Animal Assisted Therapy. So the program name uh, told you that we are very uh, concerned in the care of pet or companion animals, as well as how to practice in animal assisted uh, interactions. And if we want to work together with uh, animals, uh, they need to be under proper welfare care, uh, proper uh, caring, and also assessment. So in this course, we provide a lot of information and training. And for those interested parties, uh, they can join our course uh, to develop themselves uh, further in AI. Because for AI professionals, uh, we need this training in animal-related uh, knowledge, uh, the skills in AI, knowing more about the ethics and conducts when you serve together with animals. So uh, you can uh, spot that we will not use the word use 
today. Sometimes you may uh, hear the word use animal in some service, but today we are all very professional in this form. So you uh, never heard a word called it use animal because we are not using them. We are partnering with them or they are our advocate. Uh, we are working together. We are not using them. So this is a one very important word that we should not or we must not use this word use. <laughs> and also uh, AI training, uh, also need you to undergo some professional human service uh, training, like uh, social workers, uh, teachers, uh, different kind of therapists, uh, counselor or psychologists. So uh, this uh, HKM really pays program in uh, the higher diploma program uh, can encourage people to know more about these different components and facilitates our students to further develop themselves uh, into a capable human helping professional and also know more about animals and how to work together with animals. Uh, but in Hong Kong, some uh, local condition or restrictions that uh, we mostly work with uh, dogs and cats in Hong Kong and HKIAI focus uh, more in uh, dog services. But uh, overseas, uh, I'm very keen and very interested in working together with uh, equine because this is very important that um, we can serve with different kind of animals. They can bring to different kind of uh, things. Okay, um, this kind of complementary intervention is uh, health growing very important. Noticed by different uh, human service provider because in the past uh, most of the time uh, we are working with some uh, CPT or different kind of uh, for, uh, therapeutic uh, skills or techniques, uh, but. Nowadays, uh, Madam mentioned about a One Health, or we are talking about One Health very globally, especially under the COVID. And so we are focusing more on the benefit between the nature connectedness. And under ecotherapy, you can find that uh, ecotherapy co uh, concerning about something like uh, forest bathing, uh, mindfulness, as well as animal assisted intervention. So we focus on animal in uh, assisted intervention. That is one kind of ecotherapy or one kind of natural connectedness. And we are developing this together with uh, different parties. Okay, so I strongly believe that um, with the support of all parties, especially all of you in this forum, uh, we can have a very wonderful pathway to grow in Hong Kong. So maybe we'll have start to the panel discussion. So let me uh, thank you once again uh, for Dr. Amy's for sharing of ter terminologies, uh, Madalena sharing of the assessment, and Ms. Wu sharing of your implementation in Taiwan. Uh, I believe we will start the amazing panel on the topics, uh, the future of animal assisted intervention uh, now. Uh, we'll talk about the big trends that we need to keep our eyes on, especially on our professional and ethical practice in AI, which means that we can do our best uh, to human, benefiting human together with our partners, animals. Okay, um, so I wish to see uh, what kind of uh, feedbacks uh, or co uh, comments from all of the previous uh, speaker. Um, in your experience or what you can share with us about um, in these past five years in your local areas or when you spotted internationally, uh, what has the field changed uh, as we internationally connected more tightly in these past uh, five years? Uh, a lot of uh, online webinar, a lot of uh, seminar, etc. So uh, what you observed in the past five years changed or in a positive way, or maybe you spot in a negative way uh, at your local area or globally. Uh, maybe Dr. Amy, uh, do you wish to share and then other speakers, you can feel free to share. Sure. Uh, thank you. I think, um, you know, every year, every few years, we grow in the field, you know, with new research and new literature. Uh, within the last five years, um, actually closer to seven, there was a set of competencies that were published through the American Counseling Association for AAIs, uh, which were the first of their kind. And having this set um, of criterion of how to practice competently, safely, and ethically has demonstrated a need for more education, training, expanding knowledge, um, and how that has to include the understanding of animal behavior. You know, it's not just just bringing a dog into the room. It's not having an animal there. It's being able to advocate for both the animal and for your client and, and maintaining that. And these competencies um, that have since been adapted by uh, several other organizations like Animal Assisted Intervention International, uh, IAHIO, and um, Pet Partners 
um, and more organizations are doing the same thing. So ensuring that professionals have the ability to align with a set of competencies and guidelines rather than just doing what they think is, um, is best to do. Um, it, and it provides additional safety and um, ethical practices for all. And I think the over the last five years, uh, the dog welfare or animal welfare piece has definitely uh, come into play. Um, it, at some point earlier on, it was the emphasis was strongly um, on the human side. Look at the humans benefit, the humans are benefiting. And there was very, very little uh, in the literature regarding welfare. And now there is a lot more about that. And it's more of an expectation to include and um, groups like PADA who are making sure that the animal is not only suitable for the work, that they're actually enjoying it or willingly engaging um, within the, the context of the interaction. So, thank, thank you, Amy. Uh, so maybe uh, Madalena, do you have any uh, views that, um, for example, PADA in the past five years, uh, you just uh, started PADA in these few years. So any change before and after uh, PADA set up and you observe uh, from the AI field, maybe in Poland or internationally? Yeah, I actually, I agree with Amy. It's <laughs> not so, I'm just after Amy, so I can say, okay, Amy said all the points important. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so what, what can I add more, actually? Uh, yeah, I agree with all the statements, mostly about the welfare, that it's uh, really starting to be a matter in animal-assisted intervention, and more and more organizations pay attention to that. Uh, but according to PADA, when we started that several years ago, and we published the protocol two years ago, yeah, now the, the field is growing, especially in Europe. We have more countries that are joining this program and want to have evaluators themselves. So it gives a huge power for that because then the program is well known and the people who are more aware about the need of screening, need of, need of certification, uh, the importance of welfare and so on and so on. Yeah, Because if more organizations use the same test and uh, it's scientifically proven that this test is nice and it's working fine for the field, yeah, uh, then the new handlers and new organizations who want to join, they have this information. Okay, I need to educate, I need to test my dog, I need to do it properly, not just you know take the dog and bring it to the facility. So this is, for me, it's a huge step, especially that um, PADA for now is working mostly in Europe, but um, this year we will have also uh, Fumi Higaki from Japan is joining. Uh, she will um, be certified as an evaluator. Yeah, so we're starting to have evaluators in really different parts of the world, and I think it's it's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Actually, I wish to join your evaluation. Uh, also, we are waiting for you, Eddie. You know that. Yeah. Because there are some restrictions, I, I already learned a lot about your evaluation, but uh, the examination of video taking part is a little bit challenged under COVID restrictions. So mm -hmm. hopefully I can join your team also in the future, uh, because I love to um, learn from different uh, evaluation protocols. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Meta. So, uh, Ms. Wu, hello. Uh, can you share a little bit with us, so uh, any change in the past five years uh, in Taiwan or internationally uh, that you can observe? I think it's not easy in Taiwan because AAA, AAA is start from maybe 20 years old, uh, 20 years ago, and people people in Taiwan try to uh, take take dogs in uh, into the hospital or somewhere else. But uh, I think uh, past the past five years is uh, is a lot of improved. Life is people start to hear and know what is AAA. AATAE, this kind of uh, definitions. And we try to, uh, we try a lot of speech to tell people that what is AAAI AI and what we do. Yeah, because uh, in the past, people, they can't imagine how can dog enjoy our work. Why the counseling we have, we need the dog. Yeah, but uh, we are confused. Uh, a lot of time and we just try and error, try and error. I remember like we start a book from Levinson. <laughs> yeah, he just take the dog into his, her, her, his therapy room, right? Yeah, so uh, I think uh, Taiwan is, the people is start to interesting what AI is doing and we, we will work uh, quicklier 
uh, uh, in the future. Yeah. And the people is more in, uh, uh, the people is more understand that the animal's welfare is important in AI. The, the dogs or cat or other animals, not just a toys or just or toys, uh, live toys in the therapy room. I think it's, it's very important. Yes, because we all talk about the animal welfare is the first, first thing we consider in the counseling, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, we have just had a very quick review of the past uh, experience. So maybe look forward to in the future, uh, what kind of things uh, in uh, the benefit of human or benefit of animals, uh, because like uh, what Dr. Amy is uh, working with, uh, they have a lot of uh, marginal teens uh, and also they will train or rehabilitate dogs with some uh, behavioral issues. So this is uh, serving both ways, uh, benefiting human and animals very uh, perfect examples. So uh, in the future, maybe the, within the next five years, uh, anything you can expect, uh, you want or is going to happen uh, in the field uh, that is uh, good for sharing with us? Maybe uh, Dr. Amy again? Yes. Um, I think that as we are moving forward with a more consistent terminology, it will help us have more clarity um, in our work and we'll be able to publish um, articles and research that is has more validity because of this consistency and that just adds more legitimacy to the field so i look forward to that um, there are also a couple of organizations um, including um, animal assisted intervention international that are looking at um, accreditation you know there isn't necessarily an accrediting body for animal assisted intervention so people can do it however they want to do it but having uh, measures and structures and protocols in place that align with standards and competencies uh, uh, very similar to what pod is doing with with their dog side but for the human side so as professionals these organizations as they put together accreditation um, programs or accreditation for professionals we can increase the level of um, of programming and content and interventions that we serve um, with with the alignment of standards, um, if that makes sense. And again, doing more with animals and ensuring that the animals actually want to be there and that they are advocated for um, in the best possible way. So I think as we have more knowledge and more information and it's it's now kind of in within the AI field, as that starts to seep more into the mainstream that the public can and universities and publishing houses and that start to have the same experiences. Thank, thank you, Dr. Amy. So uh, maybe Madalena. So any views? Uh, thank you. I'm actually I'm a fan of the internet. I believe that the internet gives us fantastic tools to share and compare experiences between countries. Yeah. And not only at this very high level, I mean research level when experts can meet and do some research internationally because this is also very important and great but also on this basic level when you we have practitioners sometimes we have beginners who are looking for some information inspiration and they really want to get more knowledge they can really benefit from different websites i mean we have this, uh, for example, our professional platform for ICFA community, yeah, but we have also different groups on Facebook yeah, that are uh, connecting people from different countries. Yeah, So there is a possibility to share own pictures, movies from the intervention to get some commentaries about it and also to watch uh, movies and you know, lectures from different experts. So this is great, uh, great value of today's world yeah and all of us get used to uh, those tools i mean several years ago it was much more complicated to organize conference like this and uh, it would be much more challenging for speakers and for attendees to be here to discuss to share and today we are just doing it and uh, we are benefiting all of us i mean also panelists i believe that we can exchange a lot of information and uh, yeah we are smarter after that 
Okay. Uh, I think of another question, but maybe not really re related to the future so, so quick. Uh, because you just mentioned about uh, the part assessment, you will have a database uh, collecting all assessment. So uh, maybe have you, uh, have your committee uh, ever uh, reviewed it or spot any common or any uh, issue related to different uh, countries, uh, their assessment? Uh, can you spot any couch? cultural things or um, evaluation concerns uh, items with the very valuable database of different evaluations? Actually, during, uh, during the project, when we were doing the research with a uh, Hungarian team, with Adam Miklosi, we were closely looking at Polish, Norwegian and Hungarian dogs. And actually, yes, we've seen some differences. I think that some of them are based on um, cultural differences or training methods that are used. For example, Hungarian dogs, they were more waiting for the permission to do anything. I mean, the dog, uh, when it was in front of the room, the dog was waiting for owner to decide, should I go or should I stay? Yeah? Polish dogs are just everywhere <laughs> doing whatever. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so so there were some differences. Also, when you when you are thinking about the relation and the way of training methods used for the dogs, so we can observe that uh, the group is also quite diverse when you are doing. Uh, screening for dogs who are really wanting to work because the handler is has basic education. And the dogs who are just coming for the test because there is this possibility during the project, we have several open uh, call for dogs, you know, like we want to make a test and have the results. So we invite everyone. And this group is totally different than the group uh, with handlers educated in animal state intervention, um, probably because they also choose proper dogs for the training yeah, and they prepare them, teach them how to trust people, how to play with people, how to be secure in the environment. Of course, it's also the matter of personality and the genes that are inside the dog, but you can help the dog somehow. Yeah. Thank you, Madalena. So um, you, you also shared the very important uh, points again with our, our audience about the capability of the handler or the AI specialist. They need to be trained in animals and also trained in uh, human-related uh, background. So um, I, I wish to see this uh, be more structured in Hong Kong too, because um, I'm not sure about uh, your local area, but some of the practitioners sometimes uh, they have very good intention to bring animals uh, to work together, but maybe they are uh, without uh, proper uh, training in that background. So this is one that is very important here. So um, if you saw any similar case in Taiwan? Yeah, uh, I think we need uh, for people, we need more in uh, education in college, talk about AI and counseling training. And we have, we need more uh, studies and books in Chinese, yeah, we, we are started writing the books about uh, AAT in Chinese and uh, uh, a lot of uh, master studies, children is interested in different uh, different issues like autism and uh, to trial, childhood trauma, just like different, different uh, studies about AA, AI. And I think it's good, it's a good development. Yeah, and we we are in, in uh, invite more students to uh, write more more papers and books about AI. Let uh, let more people in Taiwan can understand what it is and how it work. And I think uh, we need we we still need need more you know, inter international training that with other uh, people here in Hong Kong or a, a lot of space that we can change our experience because I think it's very important, but uh, different different countries uh, is have different environments about AI. And I think it's, it's very good to experience this change. Yeah. Or maybe here in Hong Kong, we can connect with you more closely because our culture a little bit yeah. <laughs> closer, but also very important experience from the Western areas. So I think uh, that's uh, more or less for our uh, panel discussion under this topic, because uh, if we cover other topics, this is out of today's forum theme, but there are a lot of very valuable topics we can explore in the future. So um, thank you for all of your uh, very valuable ideas. Uh, any other uh, points or things you wish to add in into our 
um, panel discussion before we move on to the next steps. Seems so far so good. <laughs> Okay, so um, I believe all of us here, um, including the audience, get a lot of very valuable inspiration and information from all of you valuable speakers. And I want to uh, convey my sincere uh, gratitude to Dr. Amy, uh, Ms. Madeleine, and also Ms. Wu for supporting us. So maybe that's time uh, for me to uh, pass back uh, to the host, uh, Dr. Kathy Chim, uh, to see any uh, Q&As or any other issues to follow up. Thank you, Dr. Chim. Thank okay, you. thank you so much, Mr. Lee, for leading the panel discussion. And thank you to all our speakers for bringing together a wealth of experience and expertise on animal assisted intervention and engaging in such stimulating, constructive, and open exchanges. We thoroughly enjoyed the discussion and learned a lot from everyone today. Thank you so much again for your generosity and kind support to make this a successful event. Ladies and gentlemen, this is now the end of our Academic Forum 9. On behalf of Hong Kong Metrop Metropolitan University, thank you very much to you all for making time your busy schedule to join us here today. It's been a great pleasure to organize this event and I wish you all a pleasant day. Take care everyone and goodbye now. <laughs>